Alrighty everyone, well game number three in this best of five series between two incredible players in the world of StarCraft 2 in a series that was played at the IEM in Katowice and was one of the semi-final matchups of that tournament spawning here in the bottom right hand corner of King's Cove Ellie playing with the red Zerg pieces. He's currently up in this series and wants to close this thing out right here and right now his name is Sue. And his opponent spawning in the top left hand corner of the map playing with the blue Protoss pieces. He's currently down but certainly not out of it just yet. His name is Hero. So, guys and girls, this series has been one that has really been a macro-focused games. The first couple of first couple of games in this series so far have been macro-focused games that Hero has just been able to dominate from the standpoint of just playing out of his mind, just absolutely playing such good StarCraft 2. Some of like the best StarCraft 2 I've seen him play ever in this series at the IEM in Katowice, so just, just incredible play, he is doing such a good job, and Hero has really, has, you know, he's been trying to dictate the pace, and I like how Hero's been playing, but Sue has just been playing such good defense, which is translating to, to amazing offense, and that's exact, that's kind of the name of the game when it comes to StarCraft 2. It really comes down to the defense, guys, you have incredible defense, a lot of times that offense can, you know, you can translate into, into really good offense for you, so... I think the narrative is really, you know, obviously it's around Sue because Sue, you know, in this tournament going for his very first championship ever because he makes it so many times to the grand finals but just can't close it out. So it's a lot of narrative around Sue. His opponent, Hero, of course this, is, this guy is, is a force to be reckoned with and there is no debate about that. But against Sue, he's been having a little bit of some trouble. So let's see what he does here in this game. Because if you're down two games to nothing and you're trying to get on the scoreboard, what do you do when you are playing someone of the likes of Sue? Well, that said, looks like Sue is going to go for the standard hatch gas pool opener, going for the very same build that he's done in the past couple of games, going for that quick third hatchery. And then on the opposite side of the map, it looks like Hero is going to go for the gateway into the Nexus, and then, of course, the Cybernetics course. So he's kind of going back to what he did in game number one, which maybe he felt like in game number one he had such a good opportunity, which I would agree with that he had a really good opportunity to take a quick one, you know, get on the scoreboard at least, you know, very early on in this series. It's a little bit of some, I guess you would probably have to say that in, in game number one, Hero overextended just a little bit uh, in that first game. So maybe he thinks to himself if he goes for a similar build to what he did in game number one, he can get on the scoreboard here uh, without just the over that overextension that really hurt him. So we're going to find out here as we are seeing, of course, the warp gate is being researched. Then on the opposite of the map, it looks like the metabolic boost upgrade is going to be coming in for Sue. The two most standard upgrades for the Zerg and the Protoss going to be coming in very early the zergling speed upgrade and of course the warp gate upgrade so we are going to see right now we are going to see some of uh you know soccer is going to be coming in we have the adepts that are that are across the map here but all that said and done it does look like there are going to be some zerglings that are going to start moving out look at this formation just scattering look at that i love it and when you're when you're a Zerg player, how, that that scouting information is everything. Seeing if there's any kind of timing pushes by the Protoss, and it looks like we are going to start seeing somewhat the tech of choice as we're seeing that robotics facility. The forge is going to be coming. He's going to show. Looks like Hero wants to go for the early upgrades in this game. In this game for those uh, ground-based unit composition, it does look like we are going to see. The Roach Warren coming in once again for Sue. So Sue has really kind of stuck with what has worked in this series. And obviously, if something is working, why are you going to change it if your opponent just can't beat it? So that is what I think Sue's probably thinking right now is that, you know, he's just going to continue doing what he is doing best, which is that Ling Roach Ravager composition and of course the queen's there for the stellar defense and really getting the creep spread moving a couple of zerglings here uh are kind of chilling next to that natural expansion they're probably waiting to see if that when that third nexus is possibly going to go up and they want to snipe that probe 
But that said, it looks like we're, we're, we're looks like we're focusing, or it's as we pass that five minute mark, we're starting to move into what looks to be another macro focused game. As Hero is going to go for that Twilight Council, he's going to get those plus one upgrades going. He's also going to start up two more gateways. So, question is, is Sue going to allow? hero to kind of dictate what happens in the game is he just going to allow him to to come back across the map he plays his defense and then he goes you know of course counter attacks it or is Sue going to be the one in this game that's going to try to dictate exactly what happens we're going to find out here very shortly it looks like as sue is starting to kind of get his his economies up obviously and now he's trying to get that you know stellar unit composition together of the uh, of what looks to be the lings and roaches and most likely ravagers here once this uh, the lair is going to be coming in so we should be seeing them shortly as we are seeing a very similar build once again by hero who is going for charge upgrade he's also getting those templar archives plus one upgrades are being researched as well um so you know at this point, the only change I'm seeing as far as the build order is concerned is we're seeing a Hydralis Den out of Sue. So I like that decision actually quite a bit from Sue going for the Hydralis Den. He's tr changing it up just a little bit, but those minor things, you know, I, I, I kind of do like that decision making, even though I feel like he should just, he, maybe he should have just kept doing the same exact thing that he's been doing at the same time. Hard to say, you know, Evolution Chamber's coming in, so it looks like for by, like at this point, Sue's going to go for um, some, some of those uh, plus one upgrades, changing it up just a little bit, even though, uh, you know, even though that Roach Ling Ravager composition has worked beautifully, maybe Sue just feels he needs to switch it up just a little bit in order to, 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 to just close this thing out. Charge is being researched less than five seconds as we pass that seven minute mark. It does look like, once again, Hero kind of wants to take the fight to Sue, and I think Sue just wants to play some defense and then go for some counterattacks as that fourth hatchery is coming in. Glowery Constitution is going to be finishing up in less than 10 seconds now. And we are going to start seeing, of course, you know, really how these kind of the, fleshing out both of these armies as they're, as, as they're coming. And the question is, is are we going to see a big push here by either one of these players anytime in the near future because it does look like the spire is being researched out of sue i you know this is interesting he's gonna get the spire out there as well and so i, I actually like it a lot i like how he's kind of changing up he may, may may think that he's not going to be able to win just the you know how he's been winning he's gonna have to he's gonna have to kind of adapt here and maybe try to throw his opponent off because his opponent's going for such a heavy ground-based unit composition and it looks like sue once again is just gonna drone up get as many drones out as possible and we're seeing a ling roach hydra composition i love it it's a neat composition as hero is moving across the map now here's the thing we're seeing the high templar are out and this is a pretty scary force i'm not gonna lie as i'm looking at this it's looking pretty scary we got 10 seconds until psionic storm comes in for hero and here we go it looks like he's gonna start moving out at least to try to slow down the creep sp spread and it does look like a couple of ravagers are gonna be coming in as well this is looking scary. Some good storms here could be spell disaster for Sue, but it's all going to come down to the positioning here. Here we go. The storms are starting to come in now. More and more going in. Oh, the damage is huge. Uh, evolved muscular arguments going to be finishing up in the less than 10 seconds for Sue. But the question is, is is Hero once again overextending? The drones are being pulled off the line here, and reinforcements are coming in. Could Hero actually push this army back somewhat it looks like a lot of those high templar did go down but this army is absolutely getting decimated right now now here come the reinforcements but the thing is is hero overextending again the supply is almost dead even at this point ground armor level one's gonna be finishing up in less than 10 seconds for hero hero is trying to get on the scoreboard here he's doing a good amount of damage he gets one of those bases so now down to three bases is sue and he is starting to take a nice lead but the question is is he overextending here gg is called so no hero marine goes in pushes very hard and is able to obtain victory and get on 
the scoreboard. I hope you guys did enjoy this game between Sue and Hero. And if you guys did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe for new, stay positive. And as always, I'll see you guys all in game number four.